when the poet Robert Burns visited Falkirk in, I think it was 1787, he wasn't really that impressed. Um, he reckoned there was nothing remarkable about the town, with the exception of the tomb of Sir John de Graham, just behind me. And he wrote in his journal that he knelt at the tomb. I mean, Burns wasn't that uh, blown over by uh, a few places in Scotland. He, he described nearby uh, Bowness as a, a dirty, ugly town. <laughs> and I think that's one of the joys of travelling. It's kind of uh, taking the good with the bad. Because if every place was just superb, then you'd have nothing to talk about. <laughs> apart from anything else. Uh, you need the kind of places that are a bit iffy and a bit dirty and ugly to appreciate perhaps the places that are no, no bad. Um, today I'm going to have a look at Falkirk. Um, I'm going to compare Falkirk in the old days before the shopping centres. There's always shopping centres involved, isn't there? <laughs> And to see how the, the, the town may have kind of changed in some way and the, how, what Falkirk is like today, um, is it still a, a pretty unremarkable town? Time to find out. Starting at the east end of the High Street, the first thing you notice is the glaring white tower of the Calendar Square shopping centre. I suppose it's a fairly attractive tower that sets off this approach to the town centre. But the problem with shopping centres is that their construction can only happen when buildings in the way are demolished. Old buildings lining atmospheric byways like Silver Row and Horse Market Lane were destroyed in order to build a shopping centre here. And in doing so, a little bit of the town's character was lost forever. There was actually an earlier shopping centre built in the 1960s, but its architecture was so grim that it was demolished and this shopping centre built in its place in the 1990s. Of all the photos I found of Silver Row, the one that really stands out for me shows an old man fixing bicycles by an old cottage in 1880. It's almost like an image from a fairy tale. It is thought the image shows Alexander Fleming working in Silver Row. The building in the shot has all the architectural appeal of cottages and villages like Curus, a Scottish village that has thankfully managed to retain its character, unlike parts of Falkirk. You can see the extent of Falkirk's shopping centres in this aerial photo dating to 2012. As you can see, the Howgate shopping centre is massive. Its construction meant the destruction of a good part of Falkirk's rich architectural heritage, including Robert's Wind, Bluebell Close and Howgate. Towns and cities grow and develop in unique ways, with the roads spreading out from the cross in any number of patterns, like the strands of a spider's web. Once you start fiddling with that unique layout, you run the risk of destroying whatever it is that makes one town different from another. All these streets lost to make way for the shopping centre had character and individuality, unlike most shopping centres. This early 20th century photo looks up the High Street, and you can see the street sign for Silver Row on the far right. You can perhaps also see a building on the left, which is where Robert Burns spent the night back in 1787. 
At that time it was the Cross Keys Inn, seen clearly in this town plan dating to 1858. You can get a better look at the inn in this photo dating to around 1920. We can see other pubs and inns on that same 1858 map, like the Burns Tavern, Wheat Sheaf Inn and the Red Line Hotel. Closer to the old toll booth and location of the Market Cross are two Black Bull Inns. I'm not sure why there should be two, and a branch of the Bank of Scotland. You can see one of those Black Bull Inns in this photo dating to around 1910, along with a building on the right which still exists today. The joy of these old town plans is that the amount of detail is astonishing, giving a real insight into the Falkirk of long ago. In addition to inns and taverns, you can see the many narrow lanes and winds leading off the High Street, a few of which still exist, like Wooer Street and King's Arms Court. There is nothing nicer than a wander in unfamiliar streets, peering into every ancient nook and cranny and getting a feel for what a town is all about. Its history, its layout and its people. And it is the exploration of all these little passageways that makes a visit to Falkirk appealing. Many of the lanes that uh, once ran off the high street still exist. Um, not always in their entirety, sometimes you're just getting really an entrance to that lane or wind or row or whatever it might once have been. Uh, in this case, for example, all the kind of buildings that used to be either side of the narrow passageway have gone and it's, it's now a car park. But many of them do still exist and you can still get a feel of perhaps what Falkirk was, was once like.
Well, wandering down the high street, and you, you, you can't uh, miss the, the old church, which is worth a visit. Um, just behind me is the tomb of Sir John de Graham, uh, a knight who uh, fell at the, at the Battle of Falkirk in 1298 during one of the Scottish Wars of Independence when we were trying to kick English soldiers back out again. Some of these knights didn't necessarily die right at the battle, they may just have suffered serious wounds and died as, uh, days uh, later. Um, another knight here, very well preserved stone, also fought at that uh, battle, it's Sir John Stuart. He was in charge of um, 600 men from the Isle of Butte, they were mostly bowmen. And, um, you know, he died at that battle, and all 600 men from Butte also died. Um, you know, we sometimes think of medieval battles and the knights in armour, and it's all kind of jolly, and uh, flags fluttering and flying and stuff, but they were absolutely horrendous. Um, I think if you're a large group of bowmen, you, you, you really need some way of protecting yourself. Um, because these men were slaughtered, uh, they were kind of overrun by uh, Eng English cavalry. And you need some way of kind of just stopping that from happening, whether that's kind of stakes in the ground around and in, in and around you, or deep holes dug in the ground in front of you, so that, that, that any horses heading your way are going to kind of trip up and not reach you. So, I don't know, you, you never, you know, I wasn't there, I don't know what happened, but uh, these men were slaughtered. At 600 men abut, not one returned to the island. Absolutely tragic. And the cross just behind me, uh, the behind um, Sir John de Graham's tomb, commemorates the role that these men played in that battle. You can see the old church and graveyard in that same 1858 town plan. And if you look closely, you'll perhaps see the word stove. Oh, the detail. It must have been hard going for this one stove to heat up to 1,500 members of the congregation. What we can also see towards the west end of the high street is the Swan Inn, the Market Inn, and, right at the end, the Crown Inn. Oh, to have been inside one of those inns way back then. We can see the Swan Inn on the High Street, opposite the top of Lint Riggs, in this photo dating to around 1908. That's three buildings, and all different. The same view today would have you scream aloud. How on earth did we ever get away with building such architectural tripe? It won't surprise you to learn that these concrete and glass boxes are a mere spit away from the Leviathan that is the Howgate shopping centre. It's only when you look at old photos of Howgate and the surrounding area that you realise the enormity of what Falkirk has lost and how the town's character has been irreparably changed forever. At the other end of Lint Riggs is the New Market Bar, seen here around 1900 when a horse and cart from nearby Aitken's Brewery was delivering beer. Aitken's Brewery was just along the road, at the junction of Newmarket Street, then called Market Road, and Hope Street. I always thought the brewery was in the northern corner, but in fact if you look again at that 1858 town plan, you can see a brew house and tun house on the south side of Market Road. I suspect these may have been part of Aitken's Brewery, but the bulk of the brewery's buildings were clearly across the road.
You can see the extent of the brewery in this letterhead dating to the early 20th century. That's a big brewery. This photo, taken in 1913 looking along New Market Street, is set to show the brewery before demolition. Certainly, the brewery was rebuilt between 1898 and 1900, so I'm inclined to think the photo probably dates more to the turn of the century than to 1913. The brewery is also visible in this 1950s photo, looking along New Market Street from the top of West Bridge Street. Aitken's brewed beer here in Falkirk's town centre for more than 200 years. The site is now a supermarket and car park with about as much architectural appeal as a plum. Well, that was Falkirk. Quite hard to form an opinion about the town right at this very moment because there's just an awful lot of um, work going on in the town centre uh, with regard to putting in uh, fibre broadband cables. I mean, it's the same work's going on in many towns and cities in, in Scotland and it's, uh, at the moment it's a pretty major upheaval. Everywhere you look there's roads getting dug up and uh, barriers and work when digging things. But I suppose at the end of the day, it, once it's all finished, it means that uh, we'll have quicker broadband connections and um, I'll be able to upload my videos much quicker than I currently can. So that's got to be a good thing. In my uh, old blue guide to Scotland, uh, Falkirk is described as an irregular town. I, I just love the succinct nature of the old blue guide to Scotland. An irregular town. Fair enough. But um, I think what made it irregular, I mean, every town grows and develops in a pretty unique way. Um, Falkirk's High Street, there has in the past been lots of lanes and winds leading off it. And as I perhaps said earlier, many of these still exist. And that's perhaps part of the irregularity. Um, what you don't want uh, in a place that you're visiting is... Uh, some place that's uh, regular and neatly laid out, like Helensborough, <laughs> for example. Helensborough is all kind of parallel uh, roads and just it's all kind of ordered in a very ordered, regular and pretty boring way. But I'd like to say that Helensborough isn't worth a visit, but it's just regular, whereas Falkirk isn't. And it's that irregularity, the kind of uh, jumbly nature of the, the town centre and the little winds that lead off the high street that makes it perhaps uh, more appealing than other places, like Helensborough. I mean, I think for tourists, you know, it's, as I say, it's part and parcel of the whole visitor experience where you just go about the place and form your own opinion about places. You visit things that are okay, things that maybe aren't okay, things that are superb. I mean, when Burns visited Falkirk, I'm sure he had an itinerary, and I think the top of that uh, list would have been uh, the, the tomb of Sir John de Graham. Um, 
I, I think the town centre probably wasn't high on his list of priorities. He maybe already knew before he got here that it would be kind of uh, nothing remarkable. But uh, also on his list was the nearby Carn Iron Works. And um, when he visited it, he didn't get in, they didn't let him in. <laughs> and you can perhaps just imagine the scenario, uh, Robert Burns and his mate turning up at the Carn Iron Works. You know, famous poet, just a wee, wee swatch at your ironworks. Um, and you can imagine the guy behind the door saying, um, what's your name again? Burns, uh, Robert, uh, and you're a poet? Uh -huh, uh. Slang your hook. <laughs> but as it turns out, he, he, he could be back a day or two later, and he, he did eventually get in. The place much impressed him, I, I'm sure, as a place of great uh, fiery industry. And as visitors or tourists, we all have a kind of list of things we want to see. People visiting the Falkirk area will probably want to see the Falkirk Wheel and the Kelpies. Major modern tourist attractions are a real success story. But like, I suspect a lot of towns, um, what they do is take visitors away from the town centre. In the same way that perhaps the castle at Stirling does visitors to Stirling may perhaps go straight to the castle, they'll just totally omit the town centre. And there are some town centres that are worth visiting perhaps more than others. I mean, Falkirk's okay. <laughs> if I can say that. Falkirk's okay. It's the better than Hillsborough. Um, but it just it, it doesn't have the kind of scenic charm of some Scottish towns like um, Curis or Linlithgow and I'm sure many other places. But that's not to say that Falkirk isn't worth visiting because it's the very uniqueness of each and every Scottish town, the way it has developed over time, that makes it worth a visit. Falkirk may still be what you might term rather unremarkable, but is it worth a visit? Of course it is. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.